Well, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Sean here with another Genetry Solar video. I look like a mess because I've been up since midnight. Uh, you know, that whole thing with me working part-time retail. The retail's going crazy right now. I guess I should be looking up here and not down here. But anyways. Uh, so yeah, GenetrySolar.com. Um, thank you for your support. Power jack inverters, spare parts. Place of parts and Wi-Fi boards there. A33 Genetry. Um, just keep in mind that my call volume has increased substantially. So um, I did a video yesterday on some batteries, putting together some batteries, and I had a lot of suggestions, and I appreciate everyone's suggestions. It's a, a lot to take in. I got a lot of different people telling me how they're doing things and and you know what I should do and et cetera, et cetera. It's good feedback. It's good information. Um, now I seem to be uh, kind of uh, gravitating towards Nissan Leaf batteries. It's been mentioned to me actually several times, going back a year or more. And I was uh, looking on eBay this morning, and I found some 48 volt, which I need 48 volts, uh, Nissan Leaf battery packs. And um, they seem to be reasonably priced. Um, with my current system, uh, I can get about 50 amp hours, approximately. That's where I take them to 80% depth of discharge, or I lop off 20% off the top. So I don't take them down that far at all. And uh, that gives me about 40 to 50 amp hours of actual capacity. <clears throat> it's actually probably less. But um, anyway, so I was looking at some of these battery packs um, that are being sold right now. And uh, what I noticed is that a lot of them say 60% uh, plus capacity, 70% plus capacity. Now, I'm not looking to get something that's going to have 100% capacity, but when I look at the listings and they'll say something like Nissan Leaf 132 amp hours, and then they say 60% of that, it makes me kind of wonder if I'm really going to be helping myself any at all by spending that kind of money on a battery pack that's you know a little bit more than half of its rated capacity, so that puts it at what um you know 60 amp hours 70 amp hours maybe so that's a lot of money to spend just to gain 10 or 20 amp hours so i'm trying i'm i'd like some more information on that kind of stuff if possible uh because i would like to be able to have a system that i don't have to worry about shutting down some of those on there uh you know they say you can run a 4,000 square foot home and, and things like that and i'm thinking well if they're 60% capacity, yes, it's 252 amp hours, but 60% of that, uh, you know, you're looking at, uh, you know, maybe 150 amp hours. I mean, that 150 amp hours, 48 volts, uh, I don't know how long I could run my air conditioning on that, but um, it doesn't seem like uh, it would be very long at all. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not looking at it right, but that's why I'm counting on you guys because you're more than helpful and you've been showing me a lot of different ideas and things that um, I'd really like to be able to go with. Remember, my goal is not to be able to run 24-7 off the grid, running laundry, electric stove, central air, stuff like that. My goal is that because my dryer is actually going to be on the grid full time no matter what. Uh, but my goal is to be able to run everything else off the grid 24-7. So that's the goal. Uh, and I know it's based on your usage and so on, but let's just say that I, in a, in a day, even over, you know, over the summer, I'll be generating probably between 2.6 and 3 kilowatts of solar per hour uh, in the summer, usually from about May mid-May or so till about mid-July, uh, late July is where I peak as far as where I'm, I'm not getting any more because of how my panels are angled and so on. And um, so during that time, I'll generate about three kilowatts of solar per hour. So that's quite a bit of solar that I can keep the house going. I can run the air during the daytime and then keep it off at night. My main goal is that at night I'd be able to keep the inverter running, and if the air conditioner kicks on occasionally, then fine, it comes on occasionally. Um, you know, the kids are up late and they're playing their games and stuff like that. 
fine. That's not going to make me have to run to the inverter and shut it down and, and things like that. So I'm not looking to be able to literally replace the grid right now. That's too expensive. I couldn't do it. Um, you know, it's just way, way too much money for me right now. When we get our own property and we build our own house, I will put together a purpose-built battery bank that will be able to give me what I actually need. Uh, continuous, all that stuff. It'll be everything that I can possibly need. So that is something that um, is in the future. But for now, I want to get a battery bank that will last me two to three years. Um, because like I said, in two to three years, we're going to be moving anyway. So then I'll be 100% off the grid. Then I'll have to have a very big, robust system where I can run 10 loads of laundry at night and still have plenty of capacity for everything. So for now, though, the laundry is staying on the grid. Everything else is going off the grid. So I do need something that I don't have to worry so much about uh, shutting everything down, memory effect, things like that. I mean, obviously, I'm not planning on taking them down to zero all the time. Um, but, um, I don't want to have to say, well, I'm at 80% depth of discharge. So now I, um, I have to shut everything down because I don't want to damage the batteries or whatever. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm looking at these Nissan Leaf batteries, which a lot of people have been recommending and suggesting, but when I'm reading it, it's just a little confusing for me because I'm learning all this stuff. This is all stuff I'm learning. And when it says 132 amp hour, 48 volt battery pack, and then it says 60% plus capacity, I'm thinking to myself, well, then it's really not 132 amps. Maybe the pack originally was 132 amps, but now it's more like 70 amps or, you know, 80 amps or 60 amps, in which case I'm not really gaining anything by spending the money because I can get almost that on the system that I currently have. Um, so that's where a lot of the stuff is a little bit confusing, I do have some people who are going to be sending me some links and some ideas and things like that. But really, my main concern is spending the money and then finding out that the cells are only going to last me six months or a year or something else like that. I mean, I'd really like to be able to get two to three years out of them. Uh, and um, my, you know, I would obviously be conscious about electricity usage and things like that. I'm not going to go running my central air all day, all night. Nothing like that. That's not the case. Um, but uh, I still want to be able to run through the night and not have to wake up at three in the morning because my inverter's beeping at me that my batteries are low because my air conditioner kicked on, the window air conditioner kicked on in the living room or something else like that. Um, so that's, uh, you know, where it stands right now is pretty much when the sun goes down um, I have to then jump back to the grid. I've got plenty of power during the daytime where I'm running on solar. I'm running on solar right now, as a matter of fact. Um, and so I have plenty of power during the daytime, but my nighttime capacity is what is extremely limited. So I'm looking to get something that will get me through the night and um, I don't have to worry about shutting everything down. I guess then I know there's a lot of variables there, but from what I'm reading, it's just a little bit confusing. So maybe some of you out there can give me a hand with this. And help me, maybe you recommend a different type of battery. It needs to be 48 volts. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when and another thing is with the lithium batteries, when it says 60% of capacity, does that mean that it will never be able to achieve a full cycle? That I'm always going to get, or, and what's that effect, have an effect on total output, amperage, surge, things like that. I mean, is the battery itself going to have problems uh, starting up my air conditioner because... Um, the capacity has been reduced. Am I am I going to run into those kind of problems? Things like that. I don't really know a lot. I have I know very little about lithium ion battery packs. So that's why I'm asking you guys because I, if I can put something together that will run my house just fine and not have to worry about the inverter shutting down because it can't get enough juice from the uh, the batteries during a surge load, or if I'm going to have to wake up at two in the morning to switch over to grid because the battery capacity has been reduced so bad that, um, you know, it just, it can't hold a charge that well anymore. Those kind of things. So, um, yeah, help me out here. I appreciate everything that you guys do and, uh, your knowledge, sharing the knowledge. And I'll be able to pass some of this along, of course, to someone else who is interested. This is a temporary solution. 
So this is not going to be my permanent. Um, I need to get all these batteries, and they're going to have to last me 20 years. That's not the case. So um, thanks again, everyone. As always, take care.